Hey, great morning, great morning. Happy Monday. Oh, you guys, we are on week 13. So 12 weeks, what is it? 10 weeks is supposed to be the new habit. So if you've been showing up this whole time and you have things in your life that you maybe were trying to replace not so great things maybe things that were not serving you i hope and pray that you have begun to replace those things with this i have <laughs> so like i told you guys from the beginning this is also for me this is my accountability this is what i love I love to be able to share experiences and, and I'm finally to a point where I will share my story more because now I know it's helping other people. That was not always the case where I was open to sharing because uh, there was a lot of shame and guilt attached to sharing. There was a lot of just I just didn't feel compelled to share. Embarrassment was attached. There's a lot of just feelings that I placed on things, uh, lots of emotions that I placed on these things. And what I'm finding is, since I was the one who placed these feelings on the, the story, it wasn't able to get out and help others. I think the problem is sometimes we look at our stuff and we internalize, compartmentalize, suppress, and we're searching. We're searching for a void that we cannot fill until we are filled from within. And I know this all too well because I searched for that void for a long time. And even when I was working from within and doing the work and turning the mirror around and constantly, you know, reading scriptures and feeling like I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, even then, another void, I'll say the true void still wasn't filled, filled. Because I had not put all my faith in the right place. I was still putting my faith in people. I had very high expectations of people. And that led me to going right back down a path that I didn't desire to go down. That made me more shameful and feel more guilt. And I went right back into this place where I didn't want to share because I felt, I just felt very shameful. And what that led to was standing in front of a mirror with an unloaded gun, wishing I wasn't here anymore. Now I will say, I have come out on the other side of that. But today's topic, toxic relationships versus godly relationships is something that I want to talk about. I have a blog on my website and I really want to start talking about some of these topics that I've written about because I've kind of just written them and then I just kind of put them out <laughs> and I leave them alone. And I feel like that's not what needs to happen. I did a lot of self-reflection yesterday and I was like, you know what? It's time to do a little bit more. So, you know, these mornings, morning calls have been kind of one way where I'm reading, I'm sharing what I'm reading. 
um, reading the daily devotional. That doesn't have to change. But I said, no, it's time to step it up just a little bit. It's week 13. So I'm going to read off of this blog that I wrote called Toxic Relationships. And I wrote this specifically to help promote the nonprofit that I'm vice president for called Transitioning Queens. It's a, it was founded by my good friend Jada Jordan, who came out of a toxic relationship. I was the child in a toxic relationship. And so I wrote this more to promote that nonprofit because that's what we exist for is to help women transition out of toxic relationships because honestly they just most of them they don't have anywhere to go and I didn't realize just how flawed the system was until I linked up with her and started learning more about it so anyway I'm going to talk a little bit about that because it's something that I've had to learn because toxic relationships with I didn't realize just how well-rounded that could be, that subject could be. It's not just what I grew up with, domestic violence, it's not just that. It can literally be any relationship, friendship, relationship, uh, marriage, whatever. It can be any relationship that takes away from our self-confidence, our well-being, makes us feel worse about ourselves. It's any of that. So again, I felt compelled to share this because I think it's important to start sharing different things and different topics. And if you have a topic that you would like me to explore, please share it because this is what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing now. <laughs> um, I do want to start this off with a, with a prayer. <sighs> Lord, thank you so much for waking us up this morning. Thank you for the ability to continue this journey with you. Thank you for embracing us when we're falling apart and feel like we have nothing left. Thank you for filling the void when no person can fill it. Thank you for bringing us back to whole when we feel like we're broken in pieces. Thank you for allowing us to come to you. Thank you for guiding us through difficult situations. Thank you for also letting, letting us go through situations and then being there to pick us back up when we fall. Lord, you already know the outcome of any situation we get into. But just as any father would do, any parent would do, you allow us to go through certain things so that we can learn and gain the experience. And then you're there to help us through when we crash. Lord, thank you for the blessings. Thank you for everything that we have. We're truly grateful for all the experiences you provide to us. We're grateful for the wisdom. We're grateful that we now know we have the armor to go out into the world and speak life into other people, but also know that not everyone is gonna want to receive it, but to still be the light for them as well. Lord, thank you for continuous progress. Thank you for making us imperfect because it's those imperfections that allow us to inspire others on a massive level. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to show up today. Keep us safe. Recalculate, help course correct when we go the wrong way. And show us the direction you desire us to go in. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up. I started a little bit late today um, because my alarms didn't go off. <laughs> but
So maybe I was meant to sleep a little bit more. Who knows? All right. So again, today is toxic relationships versus godly relationships. Now, this is also in my blog. I talk about toxic relationships versus healthy relationships. So it's basically the same thing. A godly relationship is a healthy relationship. So, you know, no matter what you believe in, you can still relate this to anything. Okay. So if you go to jodywatkins.com, you can go to slash rights, and that's where all the blogs are. I'm going to link this one specifically today. So the dictionary defines a toxic relationship as very humble, I'm sorry, very harmful or unpleasant in a persuasive or insidious way. Toxic relationship is a relationship characterized by behaviors on the part of a toxic partner that are emotionally and not infrequently physically damaging to their partner. Now, if you think about physically damaging, that's when I thought, you know, immediately about domestic violence. But if you really look at it, at the emotional side of it, when someone is stressed, when they're in fear, when they're in fight or flight mode, if that, if they stay in that state, that can literally take their immune system down. It can cause their body to eventually shut down. So it's still becoming physically damaging no matter what it looks like. Now a healthy relationship on the other hand, or a godly relationship, builds self-esteem, it builds self-worth, but a toxic relationship drains us in those areas. Now, if I look at my journey as I was building my spiritual self, I guess you can say, my relationship with God felt uplifting and I felt worthy and the feelings of shame and guilt began to diminish more as I felt safe and I felt like, even though I knew I didn't fit in, which is fine, I get that now, I'm not supposed to, I felt safe, I felt safe, and that's something that I had really never felt in my life, I never really allowed myself to feel, so I finally felt safe, so it talks about that. And if we talk about a godly relationship, it says it's a safe relationship, a relationship where we can be ourselves without fear, a place where we can feel comfortable and secure. But a toxic relationship is not a safe place. It's characterized by insecurity. If you have your Bibles, there's a couple of verses that I would like for you to turn to, or if you can, if you wanna just listen in, that's fine. I'm actually gonna be switching pages on here, so I'm gonna write this down real quick. And make sure, please, to give me some feedback you know, what can I do better in these calls? What do you like? What do you not like? Doesn't mean I'm gonna change it. <laughs> but I do love feedback. I love feedback because I think it's important that if we're gonna take the time to do something like this, that we are serving those who are here with us. All right, so we're gonna go to Psalms 139, verse 14. It's right there. All right. I will give thanks to you because I am awesomely and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your, are your works, and my soul knows it very well. Here's what I had to learn. And I see this in a lot of people because I actually just had a conversation yesterday with a really good friend of mine. and. And she said, I didn't reach out to you because I felt ashamed. Because I went back to where I was. 
I am the last person to judge. Because Lord knows, I backtrack to you and everybody thinks the journey is just straight up. But what it really is, is you have this journey and you have distractions, 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 distractions. So what we have to learn how to do is if we have a distraction, we have to pull back to center. Distraction, pull back to center. Don't go too far. Because if you go too far, it's going to be a whole lot harder to get back. We also have to be willing to ask for help. And that's what I told her yesterday. Don't go into the cocoon. I've been that person and I tell you, as I speak right now, the same thing I told her yesterday, I'm turning the mirror around. Because I don't like to ask for help either. But here's the thing, he, God cannot provide for us. No one can provide for us if we're not asking. No one can help us if we're not asking. Let's go to Proverbs 11. I had to be careful just then because I was going to go into another story and I don't want to go too far off center <laughs> from our topic. So let's go Proverbs 11. This is verse, we're going to go to verse 27. Actually, I'm going to start with verse 25 because this is something that I had to really pay attention to. Because sometimes that's the thing we tend to focus on lack. You know, we're, we're working to make ends meet. But what I've learned is Sometimes if we give, what we receive is going to come back tenfold. The Proverbs chapter 11, verses 20, verse 25, it says, A generous person will be prosperous, and one who gives others plenty of water will himself be given plenty. Now this is what where we talk about the godly and the toxic relationships too, because if you go down to verse 26, it says, one who withholds grain, the people will curse him. But blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. So if I, I always say you should have your own interpretation of these verses, right? They are left open to interpretation on purpose. So if I look at the grain as being the knowledge that I've gained throughout my lifetime, whether it was in PA school, medical stuff, nursing, um, lab tech school, personal training, nutrition, taking care of my mom when she had HIV and MS and every other thing and learning about mental health then and learning about how important protein was and all these things. If I hold on to that grain and I don't share it, I'm withholding it. And how am I helping the next generation if I withhold that information? But it says a blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. Now there was a time I didn't believe that because I have programs and I wanna pour into people. And sometimes I'm like, Lord, what am I doing? What am I doing wrong? The problem is I'm listening to the wrong people. <laughs> And so I decided just to be still, but I really like that verse. So toxic relationships versus godly relationships. A godly relationship is a giver. We don't have to worry about anything anymore because what we provide to others is gonna come back. So let's go to verse 27. It says, one who dil diligently seeks good seeks favor. But one who seeks evil, evil will come to him. So what are your thoughts about that? You now we're talking about godly versus toxic relationships. I really, again, I wanted to share that 
because I think it's important that we know the difference because when we go out to, into the world, we are going to encounter so many different types of people and we have to know that they're not going to always operate like we do, unfortunately. So I hope that talking about this helps you be able to discern a little bit more as you go out into the world the difference between someone who lifts you up, gives you self-esteem, helps you feel more confident, and the difference between someone who wants to control you, is using you, and who doesn't respect your boundaries. You have to know the difference. So let's go ahead and read. I don't want to change this part up and we're getting a little bit late here. So we're on June 27th, you guys. June, where did June go? Somebody answer me that. <laughs> time, 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 time is our most valuable asset because we never get it back. We spend it and we never get it back. So be careful how you spend it. June 27th, so we have a, a sense of identity. I always say it, it's interesting how these always come up to be kind of in line with what we talk about. Now you are God's people. So again, that's 1 Peter 2 verses 9 through 10. If you're on the YouTube, the Wi-Fi at my house keeps cutting out, so bear with me. <laughs> it's been going on for a while says, if I asked you to describe your identity, how would you respond? Our identity includes our character, personality, distinctiveness, and uniqueness. In 1 Peter 2 verses 9 through 10, we find a beautiful description of our identity as believers in Christ. Not only has God chosen us, but he's asked us to represent him to the people around us. It's comforting to know that a believer's value doesn't come from what she achieves, but from being one of God's children. Through Christ, we are royalty. So if we bring that back to toxic versus godly relationships, we have to stay around people who treat us like we are royalty. So examine your relationships today. Examine the people that you stay around most. If you're not around the right people, let me know because I've got some amazing people in my life and I am happy to share them because they can help me. I know they can help anyone. So examine your relationships today. It's very important because here's what else I know. We can't get to where God wants us to be if we're constantly being pulled off course. So as you go out into your day today, I pray for peace and prosperity, perseverance and faith. And know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made through God's eyes. God bless you. Thank you for showing up and I plan to see you tomorrow. Have an amazing, amazing day.